Welcome to the first video in the School Garden series. My name is Danielle Anderson and I'm a food systems dietitian and education consultant. Each video in this series is intended to provide a foundation for garden programming and give you the best shot at creating a fruitful, functional garden space. Part one will look at some of the reasons why it can be worthwhile to advocate for a garden space or garden program. Part two discusses the necessity around planning conversations to have before breaking ground or expanding gardens, as well as the importance of garden committees and garden coordinators. Part three provides a growing guide with specifics around Maricopa County growing and highlighting growing zones, seasons, and planting calendars. And part four provides general planting techniques and best practices for maintaining a functional garden. This presentation will look at all of the ways a garden space can be an asset to its environment and how it can help improve the culture of a school or community setting. We will first look at the connections in a school setting, acknowledging the CDC health standards and noting how school gardens integrate easily into local wellness policy via nutrition education practices. This presentation will also look at how the garden can provide space for social emotional skill building and behavior management practices. And then we will look at the benefits of outdoor learning, understanding our food systems, and building environmental stewardship among students and community members. A large area of focus when it comes to school gardens is how to integrate garden activities into K-12 curriculum and state standards. There are lessons upon lessons already available demonstrating exactly how to mesh garden activities seamlessly into basically every subject area math, science, language arts, art, physical activity, health, etc. Therefore, this presentation will not spend much time on this component except to highlight a few reliable evidence-based resources that can be helpful. Check out Junior Master Gardener curriculum and website, kidsgardening.org, the School Garden Support Organization Network or SGSO Network, and Life Lab. They all provide so many lessons and activities that are already tied to curriculum standards by subject matter and age. Well, let's start talking about garden advocacy outside of curriculum by looking at the National Health Education Standards, NHES. These standards were developed to establish, promote, and support health enhancing behaviors for students in all grade levels. Healthy eating learning opportunities, nutrition education, and other activities integrated into the school day can give students the knowledge and skills to help choose and consume healthy foods and beverages. In addition to connecting with health standards, nutrition education can also enter into a school day using farm to school, garden programs, and local wellness policy. The CDC describes farm to school as including one or more of the following strategies. Purchasing and serving local or regionally produced food in the school meal programs. Educating students about agriculture, food, health, and nutrition. And engaging students in hands-on learning opportunities through gardening, cooking lessons, or farm field trips. The National Farm to School Network and the Arizona Farm to School Network categorize the three elements only slightly different with school gardens, education, and procurement at the forefront of the movement. So why is it advantageous to include school gardens as part of nutrition education? Research indicates that students who participate in school garden activities have increased knowledge about nutrition and agriculture, are more willing to try new foods, and they are more likely to consume more fruits and vegetables. So now let's look at what it means to advocate for nutrition and gardening specifically into the policy side of K-12 education. Local wellness policies include goals for nutrition promotion and education, physical activity, and other school-based activities that promote student wellness. As mentioned earlier, schools can mesh garden activities seamlessly into basically every subject area. School gardens can also easily be attached to before and after school programming, clubs, fundraisers, community outreach and engagement opportunities, STEM nights or curriculum nights, leadership programming, school health advisory councils, etc. And all of these have possibilities to potentially move forward the goals of a school's local wellness policy. For most school districts, a local wellness policy committee 
committee is attached to the child nutrition department and they often include representation from across the district, sometimes including parents and even students. The Arizona Department of Education's comprehensive school wellness program incorporates a different side, mental health, health services, and school safety types of programming with the same general guidance of when school health policies and practices are put in place, healthy students can grow to achieve a lifetime of good health. Links for both of these programs can be found in the companion resource sheet. Local wellness policy and the comprehensive school wellness program are both based on the whole school, whole community, whole child, or WSCC model, CDC's framework for addressing health in schools. The WSCC model is student-centered and emphasizes the role of the community in supporting the school, the connections between health and academic achievement, and the importance of evidence-based school policies and practices. The WSCC model has 10 components that you can see here. Physical education and physical activity, nutrition environment and services, health education, social and emotional climate, physical environment, health services, counseling, psychological and social services, employee wellness, community involvement, and family engagement. These 10 components are really the foundation for establishing lifelong healthy behaviors by encouraging students to be active participants in their own learning and health and provide guidance to establish healthy behaviors early on in life. Here you can see how a few of the components of the whole child framework are connected together to achieve a supportive school environment, specifically the social and emotional climate and nutrition education. A healthy and supportive school environment helps children and adolescents develop the skills they need to recognize and manage emotions, set and achieve positive goals, appreciate the perspectives of others, establish and maintain positive relationships, and make responsible decisions. One path to achieving the climate or culture within a school is to establish the connection between nutrition practices, which is most often where garden work is organized. The CDC provides a research brief discussing this interconnectedness of social, emotional, and behavioral skills and nutrition education. Social and emotional core competencies include self-awareness, self-management, social awareness, relationship skills, and responsible decision-making. Attending to these competencies through nutrition education can look like students recognizing how it feels to be full and hungry, as well as how emotions are often tied to eating, schools employing non-food focused incentives and celebrations, schools offering cooking demonstrations and taste tests as an opportunity for students to try new foods, schools offering school gardens and cooking classes to foster teamwork and strengthen relationships, and schools promoting share tables to help reduce food waste. This research brief can be found in its entirety in the companion resources under social and emotional climate and learning. Now let's take a quick look at outdoor learning as an advocacy point for gardening. 300 children participated in a research study looking at connectedness to nature, sustainable behaviors, and happiness. Results show that children who are very connected to nature tended to help other people and engage in acts of altruism. They also actively cared for the environment through such actions as conserving water and reusing objects. Additionally, these children were more likely to believe in equality and scored high on the happiness scale. Happiness was gauged by responses to three separate areas, happiness in general, happiness compared to most peers, and enjoyment of life regardless of what happens. Research also indicates that being outside offers additional opportunities for both children and adults. By re-energizing students and adults after being cooped up inside and sitting for periods of time, movement is also connected to local wellness policy goals as it is shown to improve academic focus and performance. Reducing stress levels, improving overall mood, also connected to general movement practices. And with significant time outdoors, research indicates better health in general. 
Now we're going to move into another reason to advocate for gardens as garden programming can provide both educational opportunities and hands-on practices that align perfectly with a food systems curriculum. Primarily, students can learn where our food comes from. It is not unusual to encounter a student whose basic understanding is that our food comes from a grocery store. And they're not completely wrong, but obviously there's a lot more to it. Food systems education goes deeper. It provides an opportunity to build an understanding of how food is grown in this country, how it is harvested, processed, and distributed, and who is doing the work. It discusses what influences which foods we have access to. It provides connections for how the food system impacts human health and environmental health. And it enables students to gain a broad understanding of how interconnected policy and food can be. The idea of incorporating food systems curriculum into a K-12 setting not only increases the connection students have to the food they are eating, which on its own is huge, it provides so many opportunities for middle school and high school students to participate in garden programming. Unfortunately, a large portion of garden lessons, activities, and programming in general are geared toward early child care and elementary age students, which is absolutely worthwhile. But it can be argued that offering a building of experiences across all grade levels up through graduation is key. The food systems curriculum approach offers higher level thinking concepts and student advocacy opportunities built into it. This food systems infographic by Johns Hopkins goes with their food systems curriculum and attends to big ideas when students are building an understanding of where our food comes from. It asks the questions. Who harvests, process, serves, and sells our food? Why is food transported over long distances? Where is our food supply at risk of contamination? How can we interpret the information on food packages? How much food do we waste and why does it matter? How do hunger and food insecurity affect people? And what is the role of government in the food systems? When students can answer these questions, they can become advocates for a more equitable food system. And that is also connected to leadership and environmental stewardship. What does it mean exactly to be an environmental steward? Generally, stewardship or being a steward means taking care of something. Here we are looking at students being or becoming connected to the environment in a way that encourages responsibilities around caring for it. Environmental stewardship can mean students showing responsibility for environmental quality, responsibility when it comes to choices made, preservation of natural resources, protection of ecosystems, and demonstrate an appreciation for natural resources. The School Garden Support Organization Network and Life Lab were both mentioned earlier as worthwhile resources for garden education. This infographic from these organizations highlights some of the information shared in this presentation. But a couple areas that are important to share here is the attention paid to building agency and resilience alongside increasing pro-environmental attitudes and increasing the sense of responsibility to care for the environment as an environmental steward. Students can organically become caretakers and spokespeople for the environment through garden experiences. Students participating have in garden programming have been linked to more positive environmental attitudes versus students who do not participate in this type of programming. And with school garden programming, students can develop an understanding of how connected humans are with the environment, how interconnected the environment is in general, and they can gain a sense of responsibility to care for the environment as well as the skills needed to do so. Hopefully this presentation provided some insight on the many reasons to include a garden in a school or community setting. All resources are either linked below in the description or on the companion blog post, depending on how you are accessing this video. Part two is all about the planning that should take place before you break ground, so be sure to check that one out too. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.